suppose the the question that anyone asks who is, as I call them, a bona fide primary producer, that's what we call them in Australia, you're, a primary, you're in primary production, is, as with anything, I mean, it might be a new a new soybean that, that's being offered to them by a seed company, and they'll say, well, what's in it for me? I mean, how, how is this going to be benefit me and my family? And um, what's the bottom line? Um, and that's a fair enough question because, you know, agriculture's been driven to the point where it is a system about producing money as much as anything else. Um, it's not the lifestyle that it used to be, in fact. Um, that's one of the main reasons why we only have 1% of the American population actually farming now is because it isn't a lifestyle anymore. It's um, bloody hard work and um, it's very high risk. And um, it's the same in Australia and it's the um, same in New Zealand and most other industrial nations. Uh, agriculture's tough these days. Um, people are price receivers, not price setters. So. Um, so that basically says it. I mean, what do we have to offer? Well, what what I think that we have to offer is it's not a, it's 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 the permaculture thinking here, where we use common sense approaches to regenerate our landscapes and our communities. What does that mean? Well, that means that we need to sit down and assess where is our family going with all of this. Am I going to be the last generation from my family who's farmed this landscape? Um, do I want my sons and daughters or cousins, nieces, nephews, etc. to be a part of what we've worked on, what we, what my forefathers cleared without chainsaws and without, with all of that effort? I mean, are we just going to let this industrial agricultural process of the last 50 years just grind us so that all we have here are low-paid immigrants work, working on our properties and just all the money from our, all of that hard work over years just going into the pockets of few. I, you know, that's a really big question people ask and that's why, to me, bringing into all of this the idea of the carbon economy and the carbon farming um, is, really, is really important that the average farmer, the only way that they will be able to, for one, stay on their land or at the very least encourage, or well, sorry, not very least, but it, it, that they be able to get people, to, their descendants, to stay working on their farm is to engage in localised marketing. There is just no other way to go about this um, because every day that goes by, um, a, the farmer gets less and less and less for for the amount that they um, produce. So it doesn't matter how hard they work or how efficient they are. The more efficient the, the gains in efficiency are immediately withdrawn by the reduction in prices for commodities that they produce. So I mean, it's just a that's just the nonsense. So how do you get around that? Well. You engage in local food production there's, and local food distribution. There's really no other way to do that. Um, so that's that's the first thing. All right. So why do we want to go? Why? What's the benefit to us engaging in local food distribution marketing? Well, for one, you become a price setter again, and you get your full value for your work. And two, is that the margin that you've just grabbed off the contemporary distribution model of food in this country is um, can now be spent on developing your landscape and on developing your system into being a heck of a lot more invigorating. And when we educate, you know, you talk to people, why do I work so hard? Because I want to make a better future for my kids. I'm going to educate them. Well, what happens when you educate them? They leave the farm. Because farming's not an invigorating enterprise. Right? There's no invigoration at all. It's hard work and all of the rest of it. Well, why is it hard work? Well, because you're, you're doing stuff that's utterly mechanistic, um, totally subsidised, very energy inefficient, 
and you're not involved in any marketing processes apart from filling up, you know, going and stripping a crop, putting it into a truck, taking it to a silo, and then getting the check. I mean, that's that's it. Or you might be, you know, you might do a bit of dabbling on the futures market or whatever to get a better price or that sort of thing. But that's about the extent of the of the process here. Where where else is the invigoration? What herbicide am I going to use? What's the timing? What's you know, so they're not exactly invigorating processes. Where whereas, if you're involved with feeding people directly through relationship marketing, where you've got perhaps a hundred families that you're engaged with marketing to, or and through that, you have a lot more people working on your farm because you can afford to now because you're getting the retail price for your pro product or close to it. Um, means that you've got a heck of a lot more invigorating operation. You can be as invigorating as you like because you can start value adding now, you can, you, you may well, because of that relationship marketing typically operates in an ecological environment so you've got a much more stimulating environment to actually operate your farming in and you're getting paid to do it so even if you get a slight drop in yield you're still doing much better than if you follow the the industrial agricultural model where it's you know it's it's fertilized so spray spray some more spray some more harvest get your check you know that's that's not an invigorating model and it's not a regenerative model the farm is not going to be better than when you found it which you know to me is the the primary objective of uh, agriculture was well, pa yeoman said the primary objective of agriculture is to feed and clothe people, but also to build soil. If you can feed and clothe people out of your efforts and still build soil, well then, what more can you ask? And you probably add to that, if you can keep your kids going on it and make it a intergenerational exercise, well, fantastic. That's, that's all we can ask of people, isn't it?